Right, hello, I am basically recording, and I've done a video on this before, but this is going to talk a little bit differently about what um, I'm going to talk about, and that's basically live music, because I've just said that I've done a video before about live music, but I'm not going to talk about what I've said before about live music, and I am a uh, live music goer. I go and watch um, live music where possible, if I can. I know that the cost is not always easy, but I've always... I've always had two questions, and it's two questions that have. I suppose I don't look at it from. There could there could be an, there could be three, but two questions or two things relating to live music that I've always wondered is when the first the first one is simply when should you go and see an act? It's one of the puzzling questions that I've always wanted to know, and I probably ask people this, and it's an interesting one, basically because what it is it's it's the knowledge or basically asking when should you go and see a band that is a big question it's not about where they're playing but it's about who they are so let's give an example um i don't know which one but there's too many examples here so i could be um basically let's say Duran Duran. they are a p they're just an example i'm not saying they're the greatest example but it is an example and the question would would be when should you go and see Duran Duran live? Do you go and see them a when they first start? So you might be thinking they might do a gig in 1981. They've released their first album. They're doing they're doing their first tour or their first, one of their first gigs, and basically you go to see them live. When I ask them the question, should you go and see them twice, three times, four times? That will depend on whether you want to go and do that. But it's a question of when should you go and see them, and that might be the case. Do you go and see them on the off chance that basically it's 1981, Duran Duran are doing their gig, and basically um, you see them when they are at the start of their career. As in, they sing one or two hit records that they've actually had out. Girls on Film could be one of them, Planet Earth could be another one. There might only be one of the singles they've released. That warrants the gig that you're going to see. Secondly, would you go and see them maybe a few years after? Maybe they've had three albums out or four albums. This could be 1986. This could be 1987. It could be 1987 and they're preparing, or 1988 and they're preparing another release of a new album. Um, do you see the question of is it a good idea? So, yeah, you're going to see them. The, only this time, they have lots more to play with. They have four or five albums worth of music. The singles have gone from two or three to something like 12 or something like that, 13, 14. There's a whole lot more singles that they've actually released. Or, do you wait? And this could be a hard one. Or do you wait until years later? We're talking years. So we're talking going really on to the 20, 30 of March. You know, um, in, in a case of it's 2009, 2010 maybe, and Duran Duran are playing live, would you go and see them? The, the thing about seeing bands when they get to their, well not necessarily their peak, but when they get to their when they really get to the old, the old, um, ways, possibly a band like Duran Duran, and, and I would guess something, definitely a band like Rolling Stones, and definitely a band like Status Quo, and these kind of bands, and there's many artists, they have a lot more music to play on their tour. So, going to a gig, for say, Status Quo in, say, 2014, as an example, isn't going to be maybe it's going to be good it might be the old band might sound good you never know but the hardest thing would be they can't sing all of their singles even someone who's been around for even someone at westlife when they come back if they come back they might do a gig and the, and the hardest thing is they can only sing so many records hits so it's a harder task to imagine so it's always a question of when should you go and see a band is it better to go and see them when they're at their peak, maybe? When they are 
selling millions of records and having hit records here, there and everywhere, which still might quarantine the fact that they've still got more to do and they've still got more to bring because you never know whether they're going to split up or whether they're going to carry on and have a healthy break for that kind of reason. So what you would do is you do that logic that is, is, is a good logic. I mean, if you look at something like Duran Duran, as I've said, as an example, if you were to go and see him in something like 1984, 85, they could have had something like three albums out. So you know they're at the peak. You know that they're going to be on the gig, they're going to be doing world tours, they're going to be singing whatever they're going to be singing, that kind of thing. I mean, if I were to use Shaky Stevens as an example, it would be a perfect one because if I was to say that Shaky Stevens is going on tour and the bopper won't stop He's basically going to be his latest album and that's what he's doing on his tour. It's like, well, he's got a hell of a lot of songs that he can be singing. This could bulk the fact that he's going to be singing some songs off the album as much as he's going to be singing singles that he's had out before. Not forgetting, he's still got the next few albums to come along that will still quarant hit records. So he's still at the peak. Where, when you go and see somebody, maybe a little bit later on in life, it's kind of like, it's a good thing, but then you sort of get to that stage where I went to a gig and the artist didn't sing that one hit that the, you, you all love. Not, I love, I love maybe, not just necessarily you all love, but that kind of thing. There is obviously going to be time when they will have to sing the hit records, no question about that. Shaky Stevens will sing O oh, Julie in this old house and whatever, but he might not choose to sing Green Door, number one, but he might not choose to sing it. And another question that I'm going to leave off on the live experience is basically not just necessarily when do you go and see a band, but when you go to festivals, certain festivals or certain gigs that many artists do, and this will be someone like, say, Nathan Moore at A Brother Beyond or someone like that, is it right that they sing lots of cover versions? Now, you can say the same about an ordinary band and an ordinary time, you know, you can say the same about someone like Duran Duran, you can say the same about Westlife or Rolling Stones, you know, they do their gigs and they sing cover versions galore, but it's cover versions that they've never actually recorded. Is it right for them to sing a lot of them when, as a fan, you want them to be singing their own songs? And I've always said that I don't like bands who tend to focus too much on cover versions when as a whole you want to hear them sing some of their songs and this is what happened when I basically went to see Limal once in Peterborough he came for nothing to play at Fair Meadows and the whole gig was basically two songs that he'd done only himself one was The Never Ending Story and then one was Too Shy for Me Bang Catch a Cuckoo he, the rest of the songs were all cover versions of 80s songs that he'd never recorded before but as a fan, I felt I felt a bit cheesed off because I'm thinking to myself, well, I expected Lim to be singing songs from maybe Kajakugu's first album, or pretty much from his whole career that he's ever had. You know, where was Only For Love and other songs that he had? Why not that? And that's what I hate sometimes. It's very hard sometimes because you look at things like festivals where it's an 80s festival, and usually what happens is on these types of festivals you have to sing the hits because you've only got a certain amount of time. I understand that. But it's a lot harder for people who's only ever who's only really had a few hits. Someone like Brother Beyond or Nathan Moore could easily be like he could go into an eighties tour, so you could go to someone like Butland and it could be like an eighties festival or or somewhere else, it'd be an eighties festival and you'll get someone like Musical Youth, they'll play it and they do what they do and Sonia does what she does, and all these people that are playing it, you know, Limal might be there, and that, but you always get someone like Nathan Moore, and this will probably be the hardest thing that I hate, is that, he'll go there and he'll be like, he'll sing one, he'll sing one song from maybe Worlds Apart, so he might be singing their biggest hit, or one of their biggest hits, then he'll sing like, two songs from Brother Beyond, the two that everybody remembers, he ain't no competition in the hard or try. But as soon as you think of the rest of the songs that 
know some more things, there's always going to be like, oh, you have to stick cover versions in, and I hate that completely. I understand if I want to think when I want to see you again, because Brother Beyond actually covered that one, and Heaven Must Be Missing an Angel, what's going to cover by Worlds Apart, I understand that one, but it's the one that you didn't really record originally. You know, a bulk of these set lists is like cover versions. It's like three songs that he did originally within his band or as a solo artist, but the rest. So he's basically saying, you've got six songs to perform, Mr. Moore, and he's singing three cover versions, which are like, I'm going to do Living on a Prayer or Never Going to Give You Up or something else. And I feel a bit cheesed off like that because I always think to myself, if you look at the charts, he had other top 40 hits. What is it? Do do fans not go there thinking, well, I would love to hear them. You know, there's no reason why I can't sit here and say, well, when will I see you again? Could be a great record to play by Nathan Moore. You know, what about Can You Keep a Secret? Be My Twin. What about the only hit they had in America, the girl I used to know? What about if you want to do other ones by Worlds Apart? I mean, that could literally be the bulk of his set list. You wouldn't need to even think about cover versions, or if you wanted to, you could stick like one in, so that the ratio would be a good five songs from Nathan Moore's career, which might be three records by Billy Beyond, two records by World Apart, and one cover version, i.e. Living on a Prayer, or you just do six of them. You could easily sing three World Apart records and three Billy Beyond records. I think that's what I want from a lot of artists. I want them to be singing their own, their own stuff, or cover versions that basically, especially on me sort of thing, when I look at festivals like that, that's how I see it, I don't, I feel a bit cheesed off that they have to get in with a festival spirit by playing songs and doing stuff that's like absolutely, you know, <coughs> out of it, and it's a lot harder for people who, who didn't really have a lot of hits, because if you look at some band who didn't really have a lot of hits in the UK charts, it's almost like they have to do something else, and they do it because they don't have anything, like Chesley Hawks, you can just imagine him playing a festival, and all and all people will only remember, the one and only, so it's likely him to say, well, I don't really want to do anything else, but cover versions, being a bit cheesed off, because as a fan, you know that he released two or three albums, and he can quite easily dig into it, you know, dig into some of the songs that didn't quite get as far as the one and only, but a song that made number third, a song that was in the top 40, for Chesley Hawks will still be played live, there's no reason why you have to think, oh, Chad York, you're going to get six songs and be like, five covers and the one and only. No, you can quite easily say, let's do like the one and only and then sing another four tracks that he, that he had recorded originally. Because if you're a fan, that's what you expect. You don't expect to everything to be all cover versions and things that are pretty much well known. And that's what happens with people like Nathan Moore. He's all, you know, and... I suppose, finishing off on this one, that if you if you could book them for your own enjoyment, if you were to have a party or something, or you could say, I'm going to book these artists like Nathan Moore to play, then I suppose you could you could always say to him, I would like to pick the set list. I'm not telling you to pick them, you know, I could say, well, would it not be better to do it like this? Maybe that would be the best way of doing it. Maybe you could say to him, look, I'll book you for, say, an hour. You're going to play for an hour. You can sing something like, we expect about 12 songs in that hour while you're also um, being able to talk with the crowd. And I might turn around and say, this would be a great way to, to do a set list, surely, with your band as yourself, you know, do it like this. Brilliant way of doing it. And then you can sort of say, um, and that, and maybe at the end, The Harder I Try might be one of the songs that goes at the end. So you might, you know, because that's obviously the biggest hit, so you can say that, oh, as a fan he played, can you keep a secret? Oh, when he played Everlasting Love by World About, and he sang songs that were singles. Maybe the odd album track, but then again, there might be the odd cover version that throws in. Only one, only two. But lots of songs that you just haven't heard from in ages, that Nathan Moore did originally with his band Brother Beyond or World Apart. Before somebody turns around and says, but there's one song missing. There you go. It, end, it ends the whole night. The hard I try. Just an example. You have your views on this. Maybe you want to share them with me. But that's just my view. And anyway, I will speak to you all later. More videos will come up soon. So bye for now.